Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing, um, well today I'm going to be making some TN covers and I've got a couple of different covers I'm going to make today. The reason for this being that my TN is very full. It's only got the one band in there and I'm having to use jump bands and I'm just, I'm ready for a bigger, a bigger TN. So instead of just doing a standard, we're going to do a standard wide. I've got, you know, cutting mat, a sewing machine, cutting supplies, an iron, um, some materials. I have a couple of different bits of fabric here. And I've got some uh, interfacing. This is called Peltex. And it's pretty rigid stuff. You can see, I mean, it's not like super rigid, but it's it's more rigid than uh, than some of the lighter interfacing. And it's, it's the double-sided adhesive one. So when I get to the end, I can put this inside of my new TN cover and iron it and the glue will melt and it'll adhere. And I also have a pair of eyelet pliers that I'll be using later on um, to cut holes and whatnot. Anyway, so those are here. And yeah, so let's get started. Um, we'll get to the fabric in a bit here. I'm gonna start with uh, this TN. So I made this probably about a year and a half ago. And it, um, it's it got the vinyl on the back, like on the outside. And then I, instead of using paper with the Mod Podge, I used fabric and it didn't work out because I didn't use fabric Mod Podge, I just used the regular stuff. So you can see it's got, it's got wrinkles in there. It's got this huge pocket in there. And I'm kind of like, uh, I want to use it because the fabric is beautiful and the vinyl is really nice. But at the same time, I'm like, okay, I definitely need to do some work with this. Otherwise, it's not going to, uh, it's not going to work out. So I have cut it and I just, I took my, my TN and I laid it down on my cutting mat and I rolled it over to see how long it was um, and how tall it was. And it ended up being nine by 10 and a half. So I've cut this piece um, nine inches tall by, um, I believe it's, 12 and a half. Yes, it's 12 and a half long. So I've given myself an extra um, inch, nine by 10 and a half to now we're 12 and a half. So I've given myself an extra two inches on this. Yeah. So it's two inches more, which will be nice because then I can probably get six strands on here, which would be fantastic because six strands. That's great. So um, because I've kind of figured out that this is going to be my front this is going to be my back. So this is my front inside. This is my back inside. So when I, when I sew these, I'm going to start right here on the bottom and I'm going to do it with the, like the feed dogs, which are what catch in your machine and help feed things through. Um, I want them on the outside because this is really like, you can hear it. It's like, it's like the table. It's like the cutting mat. Um, and they're not going to catch that. So I'm going to do it at a quarter inch from the edge and see if I like it or not, or if I want to do a second line. Um, but chances are, it's just going to be fine. So let's go ahead and get this in my machine. Needle down, staying stitch. And I'm using a Janome new home machine. It's a DC 5100. It's a really great quilting machine. Um, I've had this machine probably for two years now. And I just put a new needle in recently because I got done with a whole bunch of quilts. And we're just going along here. And we're gonna slow down slightly on the curves. The thing about curves is you wanna keep moving. If you stop halfway through the curve, then it's not gonna be smooth, it's gonna be jerky. Swing it on around. There it goes. All 
right, there we go. All right, I'm back to where I started. Let's back to stitch a tiny bit. And do another staying stitch. Needle up, project out. All right. And that was it. So let's see what it looks like here. Snip these. And snip these. Okay. And there it is. So yeah, I'm okay with that. I could probably go in and do another one all the way around in this inside the seam allowance. Do I feel like it though? Or do I feel like just using some glue down in there and calling it good? Or do I feel like just leaving it and giving it care? It's got character. Um, we'll just leave it for now. I'm not too worried about it. All right. So next, I need to figure out where I'm putting these holes. So let's see what we got here. Um, so again, edge to edge, exactly 12 and a half. Oh, I got a little boy come calling. Hold on one second, everyone. Okay, sorry about that. So it is um, 12 and a half exactly. So uh, if I'm going to do six strands, then I'm going to need three holes. So one in the center and two on either side. And then I'm also going to need one in the center down here. And again, one in the center and two on the other side for a total of seven holes. Um, okay, so 12 and a half. There's two ways of doing this. You can either do the math using your ruler in your mind, or you can do it the easy way. Just fold this bad boy in half kind of line up like, okay, if this is my front, um, kind of see where that's at, and you can eyeball it from here. Now, I'm, um, you know, I'm hoping to get a lot of use out of this. I think what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to use my ruler. So um, half of 12 and a half is six and a quarter. So let's put this way up here. Um, these holes. Now, where are you going to want to put these holes? You're going to want to make sure you put them down because um, inserts for standard TN are not going to be the whole length of this. So you can kind of get a gauge which holes I'm using here. So this one is a little over a quarter inch away from that edge, and this one's a little over a quarter inch away from that edge. Um, I apologize for the background noise. Apparently it's maneuvers weekend because uh, everything's getting going again or whatever. So I've got six and a quarter. I'm going to do that one at six and a quarter. Um, let's see. I want to give myself a little bit of room. So we'll say six and a quarter. And then we'll go quarter inch. Yeah, the, the airships are out there. One, two. We're going to do three eighths this direction. One, two, three eighths this direction. And this is just a pen. It's just got a really fine tip on it. And so when it's it leaves, you can see you can't see. <laughs> Did all that work and you can't see it. All right, come here. Six and a quarter right there. And then an eighth past. Three eighths this direction. All right, I can see those when I hold them up to the light. You can kind of see them there. They're right, right there where my thumb is. Um, because the impression is going away pretty quickly, I'm going to go ahead and pop those holes. So I set this up earlier. I've got the um, 5 32nd bit in there. So it's not a huge hole, but it's not a tiny one either. And you just line that bad boy up where you want it and you pop them. And, and there you go. It gives you a hole. And let me see. That's what it looks like on the inside. I kind of like that. I think we're going to leave it. Let's see. What does it look like when I do one from the inside to the outside? You know, I need to do it this direction because I need to be able to see where that hole is going in so I don't accidentally hit my uh, top stitching there. So there's that one. And there's that one. 
All right, so there's the three of those. Nice. Good stuff. Those will be my three. Nice. Cool. Okay. I like it. I like it. All right. So now let's do the same thing on the bottom here. And drop this down on here just like that. And we got one at six. And I'm sorry, six and a quarter. My bad. And then one, two, three. And then an eighth here at the direction. Okay. And the same thing. Let's find those holes. One. Here comes the airships again. They're coming back. Two. And three. All right, so there's those three holes. Those pieces, you can see them down in there. They're just loading up inside of there. Okay, I'm going to have a whole bunch of these little plugs on my carpet later. It's going to be funny. My husband would be like, what did you do today? It's like, oh, babe, I did the coolest thing. Now, this is where you encounter a difficulty because, obviously, my pliers are not long enough to nag that, that center hole. So there's two ways of doing this. The first way is to fold it in half and then to cut that hole on that fold. The second way is to take this piece out of here and just to drill it down on there. That makes sense. Like you can take these pieces out of here and just just go at it. It's a little more difficult to do it that way because um, you know you have to be a little more it's just a little more up to chance. So let's find where this hole is. Um, so it's real easy. You just line these two up, right? And you can see my, my TN is nine inches. So that's four and a half, which is right there. Do, 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 do. All right. So what I'm going to do is take it and fold it in half. Kind of keep my eye on that hole there so I don't lose it like I just did. Where did it go? There it is. It's right there. This material is like really forgiving of uh, nicks and whatnot, but okay, so it's right, it's right there. I'm gonna take this and kind of get it on there like half seas and then clip it. And it didn't quite go all the way through all of the material. It left a good sized hole though. Let's see if we can go about doing this. The other way, there's a way to pull, push these out of here. I just can't remember what it was, how it works. Okay, it goes like this. I don't use this particular tool all that often, just enough to get done what I want to get done or need to get done, and the rest of the time I kind of just use other things. So I'm going to put that head in there. And where's my piece? There's my cut. Oh, come on. There's a better way to do this, I promise you. <laughs> I just don't know what it is. Anyway, so there's the hole. It is. Let's just make that a little bit bigger. Need a little dimension in there. It doesn't look the greatest, but that will be where the um, that will be where the string comes out anyway. So not too worried about it. Like I said, it can be a little bit bigger if it needs to be um, because the string is going to be coming out of it and you're going to need to get at least two strings in there.
There it goes. Good deal. Got it that time. Awesome. Okay, so there we go. We're all good. Um, of course, do I have my strings with me? I probably don't. I probably think I took them, put them away. Let me go find my strings real quick. Okay, so strings. So this is the string I was telling you about. It's a uh, bead landing. I found this in the jewelry making section at Michael's. Um, it's just so pretty. And then this I've found at Hobby Lobby before. It's by Sewology. And it is a just a white elastic. Um, so that's what I'll use on the other one. And of course, need this to uh, melt the ends so they don't fray. So let's do this. Um, all right. Let's get a band for the my fantastically scientific way of doing this. <laughs> that I'm sure everybody out there who knows what they're doing is like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm going to fake it <laughs> until I make it. Because that's, that's a good way of going about it, I guess. And let's see here. Scoot that through there. Right now, I'm not real sure how long I need that to be. We'll go ahead and tie these two together down here at this end so that I can at least give it a shot. See how how that's gonna work out. It's gonna be too much. You tell by looking at it. Oh yeah, hi. Go see, go see. <laughs> Let's take a couple more inches out of there. And I say a couple more inches because there's like an inch there in the knot and then an inch out of the pink one too in the knot. And just snug that up, pull that back out. This is actually the front. And still a little loose. So let's do another little bit here. Not too much this time. Elastic, don't do this to me, don't get caught. There it goes. All right. I like that knot right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's perfect right there. That's pretty. <laughs> anyway, okay, so let's take care of this on the inside here. Snip those down in here. It's not going to work. Let's get, instead of thread snips, let's get some actual scissors. Meant for cutting real things. Where did my, my where did my catch all have been go? There it is. Okay. Kids, don't do this at home without adult supervision or your parent to help you. And just touch the end of those. So they don't unravel on you. Pull it, pull it tighter. There it goes. Okay, good deal. And you could actually probably do this all around the edges, and it would probably seal up. Let me see real quick. That's gonna do what I want it to do down here on these edges. Yeah, kinda. It doesn't smell the greatest, but it kind of did what I wanted it to. I'm having a little bit of a problem with fraying because this is, again, fabric and not paper. But it's not too bad. All right, that worked. Good enough. Whatever. All right, so now comes the part where I string it. This is very neon. Like the yellow in this is extremely neon. And I'm kind of liking less of the neon yellow more of the other colors so let's just pull this piece off i can use this to make a jump band and it'll be inside if you won't see it as much so let's get a string in here 
again, same thing with this, kind of like, I don't want to cut it because I don't want to accidentally short myself. I have to go get my other bit of string. Okay, I'm trying to remember how this goes. Six bands. Go over and down, over, up, over and down. Over um, and tie. I think that's how it goes. But you can see those holes, they're exactly the size of one strand, so two strands will be nice and snug. And again, those holes were 5 30 seconds. Pull this through a little bit. Oh, look at that. Manufacturer's knot. Glad I didn't cut that. All right. All right, whatever. We'll work it out. It'll work. We'll make it work. Come on. This is where it gets tricky, getting it in that, uh, that hole again a second time. This is where, I don't know, a pen or something to poke that through there would be handy. Because, you know, it's elastic in the middle, so if you can get it on the elastic, there it goes. You can push that bad boy through there. Now I want it to do that a little bit because I want there to be some tension in these bands so that when when the uh, when the inserts are in there, they're pulled taut against the TN. Jasper, what's up, my little friend? Go to school. Go to school. It's almost time, honey bunny. Almost. You're excited to go see your friends at school, right? Okay, let's snip that right. We'll snip that right there. That might have been a little short, but it's okay. All right, here we go. Oh my gosh, you took my paper clip out. Better hope it wasn't holding on to something. Yeah. Alright. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Bless you, little one. And he's off. It's the mom life for me. Alright. How's that looking? That's doing good. I like it. Let's pull this back a little bit. It's okay if it's a little snug for the moment. I'm trying to get that knot down in here a little bit more. Oh, I like that. I like the colors especially. Those are pretty. All right, let's pull that snug. Snip it. And toast it. Again, children, if you're doing this, you need adult supervision. Find somebody. Don't play with fire. It's not your friend. All right, so there's there's the TN with its bands in there. All right. Oh my gosh, I'm excited to use this one. Let's set that up real quick. Hold on a second. Okay, so here we go. I've got I've got my inserts in there. You can see I cut my piece a little too long, um, even though it's got all these bands in here. And I could, you know, put a whole bunch more stuff in here, and it would make it a little chunkier, and it would be a little more like that. I don't know. We'll see how it ends up with. But with just these, these really just the three inserts in here, because I've got my um, this is my daily insert. 
And then this is, here's my weekly. And then I've got my notes. Um, and I took the, this, this cover I was using over this and I just pulled it off of here real quick and put it in the back so that I could kind of see what it would look like. Four of them in there and it's got the, the sticker folder on it or whatever and I'm just going to keep my stickers in there. Uh, but I mean they fit good. They fit in there nicely. Um, let's see here. Where did it? And then here's what's left in here. I got my card. This um, this has got a blemish on the front there you can see and so I leave this paper clip on there specifically to cover that and I'll migrate all this stuff out of here in just a minute. But um, I could grab some Target vinyl pockets and then I would have vinyl pockets in the front in the back if I wanted to do that or I could do when I do the fabric one, I'll probably go ahead and um, and at least sew in like a, I don't know, maybe a, a angled pocket, sew that into it. I don't know, when you add stuff to the interior, it starts to get a little cluttered, I think. Um, and I like having the option of being able to like remove stuff. Like these pockets, they come off. So I can remove them once they get kind of, because they're starting to get kind of old and, and junky. Um, but you can see like this is already starting to crack. It just needs to be, needs to all be migrated over. I like it. I think it'll work. I think it'll work. I like the, I like right now that it's not too chunky, that it's kind of loose. And so the edges fold over. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to say it's a win for now. So there's the one type of, of um, of Traveler's Notebook, the one way of doing it, which is to, again to use the um, Mod Podge with paper or in fabric. Um, again, if you use fabric like I've done, don't use the paper Mod Podge. Use actual fabric Mod Podge. It's a different glue composition. It'll hold on to your stuff better. And you won't get these enormous um, bits. So. The baby's back. What's up, my little little? He's back. He's back. All right, and then we're going to. Where's the band? There's the band. Oh, this had more than just that in there. I gotta reorganize this. It's already like kind of all messed up. Hey, Jasper, babe, can you bring those back to me instead of playing with them? You know that's a no no. No, you don't need those, honey bun. You need to bring them back to mommy. Before mommy takes them back from you. Oh no, don't do not do that. Don't do that. Thank you. Thank you for helping, but don't do that. That? That, holds, that makes yeah. holes. Okay, hold yeah. on real quick. Okay, so let's get started on this fabric one. Um, to start with... I've pressed and now I'm just laying out my fabrics. Um, I would previously measured everything and with what I've learned from the first one, or the first TM we just did, I know that I don't need, um, I don't need quite as much length. Now, with fabric, you have to remember to build in a seam allowance. So instead of being nine tall, I'm going to do 10 because I'm going to do a half inch seam allowance and that may seem um, really big for a lot of people um, but if I, I feel like if I go any shorter like the thing with a half inch seam allowance is it gives me room for error and I can kind of fix it if it's not quite right so what we're going to go ahead and do and let's just turn this off so there's not quite so much glare I'll grab that too a little better there we go. It's a little better. Okay. So what we're going to do first is we're going to cut this. And so we're going to cut it at 10 and I've got it, like I've got the fabric stacked on top of one another. And what I think I'm going to do, I'm still not sure if I want to do the flowers on the outside or the flowers on the inside. If you had something really spectacular on your fabric, now would be the time to do what's called fussy cut. And that means you're going to put, you're going to take your cut from where you like the pattern the most. I like the overall 
look of this fabric. The colors are good. The, the pattern is good. Um, and there's nothing that I'm particularly shooting for. I'm not like, oh, I want these flowers to be right there. So I'm going to move it around. Um, because I like the pattern the way it is, and it's pretty small scale, I'm not too worried about it. So we've got 10. And the last one I cut, I did 9 by 12. And it didn't have a seam allowance. I think I'm going to go ahead and cut again at 9 by 12. And then I'll lose an inch. Um, in this case, it'll be 10 by 12. I'll lose an inch to the seam allowance. Oh, hold on real quick. Let's put this back on you. Okay, let's do this. Look at Oh my gosh, it's way over there now. It's a rubber band. All right, so what we're going to do first is we're going to cut across the top here like this. And we're going to cut down this edge. And because I'm not left-handed, this is not going over here quite as well as I put. There it goes. All right. So let's pull the rest of the fabric out of the way. So now I have just, for the most part, just my piece. Um, let's go. Let's go. Where are we going? Well, it's not time to go anywhere yet, so you can hold off. Okay, so now I'm just trying to line it up so that it's 12 inches wide. And now we're going to turn it, and we're going to make sure it's 10 inches tall. All right. That's it. That's done. Okie dokie. Um, from here, I'm going to press these again real quick because you can see there's still a little bit of, um, they need to be pressed. And from here, what we're going to do is take this fabric and turn it. Turn it right sides together. So this is the you can always tell the right side from the uh, wrong side because the pattern is more pronounced. The colors are a little more saturated. And what we're going to do is we're going to sew all around the edges a half an inch from the edge until we get. I think I decided I was going to do the bottom, leave the bottom open. You're going to want to leave an opening so that you can turn the fabric right side out and then also install your interfacing on the inside. So I'm going to turn on my machine and I'm going to sew a half an inch all the way around. And when I get to the corners, I'll show you afterwards. What I'm going to do is I'm going to miter them. And that just, like, when you get about um, three quarters of an inch from the edge. You stop, you turn on a 45 degree angle, and you sew, and then you turn, and you, you keep going. So that's what I'll be doing with the corners. So let me get this set up, change the foot on my sewing machine, and I'll get, I'll get the sewing done, and then I'll show it to you guys, okay? So just hold on for all of that. Careful playing underneath there, please. Yeah, how many you caught underneath there? You got your tools? So here's this. 
and I left an opening at the bottom of this, a pretty good sized one. And this will be where you put the interface, like when you turn it right side out, you'll put the interfacing in there. Um, snips, and I'm going to snip these corners. You see that there? I got stitched along here, and I just snipped it. I've got about a, a little more than a quarter inch, um, probably close to three eighths of an inch there on that. And that's just giving that seam a little bit of room. All right. And we're not done with the sewing machine yet. We'll come back to that. So here we are. Um, this is what it looks like right now. So let's turn this right side out and see how it looks. Push out our corners a little bit. And this is why I miter those corners because it makes it it makes it round out a lot easier on its own. Right. Right, okay. I'm gonna give this a quick press and try to smooth out these edges right here. And then we will cut and fit the interfacing to go on the inside. And then we'll finish the actual cover and move on to punching holes and putting in the bands. Okay, so hold on real quick while I do that. Okay, I'm back. And I have uh, I turned it right side out um, and I pressed it. I didn't use any steam. I didn't, because I don't want to stretch the fabric. I just wanted to press it. And I tried to uh, smooth out my corners nicely. And I kind of pressed the pieces in here. So, and hold on. Right, you, yeah, you need to go back out the way you went. Yeah, I don't want you back in this corner, honey bunny. Can you get back out, please? Be careful. Thank you. All right, so this is all good to go. So now I'm going to measure my piece. And let's see here. I need to cut my piece of interfacing 11 inches wide by 9 inches tall. So let's get this. All right. Here's my nine inch mark. It's right about there. Let's cut it as straight as I possibly can manage it. Let's cut a piece here. That's nine by 11. Get that corner. There it goes. Okay. Same thing. Turn it around. Nine by 11, not eight. Nine. There we go. Okay. Cut that way and then cut this way. All right, cool. So here's our piece. I'm going to use my little rotary cutter here. See this? Okay. And I'm going to kind of just freehand around these edges. And again, like I said, this has the, the glue, the adhesive on both sides of it. So when I iron it that last time, it'll, uh, it'll all stick together from the inside. <laughs> so, and it'll be rigid. All right, so here's my piece. Here's my Dan. Okay, so we're going to want to cut, shave just the tiniest bit off one of these edges, the top and the bottom, the side and the side here, and this bottom edge. Oh, yeah. All right. One of those fantastic, annoying toys that like somebody sent you that you're like, oh my gosh, and there's noise in the background all of a sudden. All right, so where's that opening? There's the opening. Now, when I shove this in here, what I want to make sure I do is I get it on like this side of the seam because this is the lighter colored material. 
and because this is going to be my outside if I, I've decided this is going to be my outside it's going to be the interior so I want to make sure that my my interfacing sits up against this piece of material inside here on this side of the seam that's sewn and then and on the inside of the the flap like that so and this is I mean it's not terrible it's not fully rigid so I can kind of roll it up a little bit put it in there and just kind of finagle it in there kind of like putting a duvet cover on a duvet if you've ever experienced that kind of got to get your corners first and then get your other pieces lined up your seams aligned aligned rather and uh put this back over here in front of the camera here like I said, I want to tuck it on the exterior fabric side of that seam in there. I'm just going to run my hand along in there, try to pull that seam through to the inside. See, I was going to do my nails yesterday. I'm glad now I didn't because this would scratch them all up enough that I would be like, oh, they look like crap now. All right, so I forgot to backstitch at the beginning of my opening. So that's why that kind of keeps unraveling like that. But So now I want to make sure I tuck it in there nicely. Nice. All right, so there it is. It's in there. If you look down in there, you can see that seam is on the inside. Can you see that down in there? How oh, that seam's on the inside. It goes all the way around, and then right here, I'm going to tuck it like this. I'm going to turn around behind me here and hit it with a blast of the iron and set that. And this can sometimes take just a minute to set. And when I do this, I always I iron the uh, the opening first. I'm not going to do the whole thing real quick. I'll, I'll pause mm -hmm. the camera. But when I open when I do this, I I iron this down first, and then I ironed like I set this in there like that and then I ironed it down and it's already you can see down here it's already starting to set real nicely so let me pause this and I'll finish doing this ironing and then we'll come back and we'll top stitch and okay so now it's done it does have a little bit of a crease in it but it's not too bad that'll come out oh yeah that disappears the second I hold it so I can get an idea of what it's going to look like here and just determine what do I feel like is the front and what do I feel like is the back. Um, you know, I'm pretty much, <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, the opening is right there. It doesn't really matter. It's, it's beautiful on both sides. Well, let's go ahead and close this opening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch instead of a quarter inch, I'm going to stitch an eighth of an inch and it'll be twofold. It'll, it'll line the outside of the, uh, of the TN, kind of give it that little bit of finished look. Um, it will secure the, uh, interfacing inside there so that it doesn't shift around at all. And then it'll also close that opening. So I'm going to do that real quick. Let me get to it. Okay, now back stitch, and now the staying stitch. Okay, 
Okay, and that's it for the sewing machine. All righty. So there it is. My corner's not the smoothest, but that's okay. There's the outside. And then there will be the inside. Then we press it again real quick, just to make sure I got all that glue. So next we'll cut the holes. Um, again, I don't know if I want to do grommets in this one or not. We'll see. Alright. Ironing is complete. Too it's hot. Hot, hot. Alright. Cutting the holes. So I'm going to use this uh, white elastic this time. Um, where is the edge? There it is. Instead of the rainbow stuff, I think this will look prettier, prettier with the um... jazz. What are you doing, buddy? You crashing? That's no good. Yeah, I think the white will look better with this as opposed to the rainbow. I think the rainbow is going to be a little, yeah, a little too much. <laughs> Plus, it doesn't have any yellow in it. I'm not going to use the yellow. It's not enough. All right, so let's get flyers again. Where did they go? Oh, <laughs> they're right there, silly. Wake up. Um, let's get my grid. We're looking at 11. So that's, again, we're perfect at nine, okay. So let's do 11 is five and a half. And then at quarter and a quarter. Again, this is the uh, this is a, a friction, a pilot friction pen, and these marks. If I wasn't going to go ahead and punch them out of there, would disappear anyway because the um, the heat, the heat from the iron. If I was to to use an iron on it, would make it disappear. The adverse side of that is if I was to, you know, stick my TN in the freezer, then they would come back. But uh, I don't really plan on doing that, so not too worried about it. Now, I went ahead and made the decision that I'm not going to uh, use the grommets on these. I'm... Uh, I don't particularly care for the grommets, plus I would have to space the holes way farther out. And I don't really want to do that. I kind of want to keep them close together and clean. So I'm just going to iron it a couple of times really good. And um, then once the elastic gets in there, uh, not play around with it too much. So again, same thing. The five and a half. Three eighths over and three eighths over from that. And you can see those those dots are already starting to disappear because the, the interfacing inside of there is still got a little bit of heat from the last time I ironed it. Same thing. One. <laughs> There's look at all those plugs coming out. Again, put this on this side. Make sure I put the hole where I want it. Two. And it's too close. Turn it, move it over. There it goes. Three. All right. Making a mess. Love it. All right. Iron it again. Give that glue on the interfacing a chance to kind of seal, help seal those holes a little bit. And again, the same process with the center one. We'll line it up. Four and a half right there. 
fold it in half. Okay, one last quick iron. You did your friend on this one, so turn that iron up all the way. There we go. All right, let's cut our band here and string it up like I did the last one. Oh, that's a mess. All right, again. The super scientific way of doing this. Come on. Sorry, I keep doing things off camera and reminding myself, like, put that back in frame. If I sat down, it would probably make it actually here. Let's do this. Ah, there we go. Now, when you use your flame on this white cord, just be cognizant not to, to do it for too long because you don't want it to burn the cord or chart and make it look all dirty and burnt and gross. Just to mention, because I've done it in the past and been really disappointed in myself because it's kind of like common sense, white cord, Fire, it's going to turn brown and eventually black and it's going to look burnt. So just be, just be aware. Oh, it's still too much. I shouldn't have bothered moving it all the way down. Um, seems to be the tried and true method with me. I probably waste so much elastic doing it this way too. I, there's got to be a better way. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Mm, you can hear we got story bots going in the background. Can you hear that? <laughs> I certainly can. Okay, come on. Let's quicken this up. You know what? I'm going to pause the video because I don't want it to go over an hour. But, okay. So, but like I said, I wanted to get this done entirely. So there I've got all my bands in there. Um, once I get some inserts in there, it'll stand up on its own a little bit better. Let me grab some real quick. Out of this one. So you can even see, like, the size is a little more standard TN sized. Um, of course, set this all back up. That's okay. Just grab these out of here real quick. There we go. This one wants to spring open more than the other one, which is fine. But it's definitely going to need the inserts to kind of give it structure, I think. Because otherwise, it's going to feel, even with that. Teltex in there, it's going to feel very floppy because it's made of cloth. So, but still, it's a nice one. All things considered, there's those extra bands from that other elastic that I was like, oh, I've got extra. I'll make jump bands out of them, which is fine. And. Here we go. Just putting that back in there. For now. Oh, I like that. Very nice. Turned out really nice. And it's hefty. 
I might need to tighten this a bit, a little bit, not too much, just a little bit. So there you have it, you guys. So, um, <laughs> my little one in the background. Bye. Um, so there's the fabric one. And then here's the one with, um, in this case, it was fabric and vinyl using the Mod Podge. Um, I will say my experience with the Mod Podge is it as it dries out or depending on what climate you live in, if you live in a, in a more humid climate than I do, um, it would probably, I don't know, continue to kind of have that flexibility. But I know here in Colorado, when it starts to dry out, it gets a little crinkly and the leather or the vinyl can start to get a little crinkly. But uh, this one being cloth um, probably won't weather that badly. And also because it is cloth, it is 100% washable. So if I needed to wash it, I could. I appreciate it if you guys stayed with me through the whole video. I hope um, there was, had been some questions and comments in previous videos about like how I did this sort of stuff and the steps I took. So I hope I kind of answered those questions and and helped you um, get some ideas about, you know, how you might make your own traveler's notebook. And of course you can change the size and the color and the fabrics, you know, to your heart's content. But um, if you can't find something or if it just seems like all your options are really, really expensive and you're living on a budget like I do, then um, there is an option for you. You don't necessarily have to go without. So, uh, comments, questions below. I really appreciate them. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and hit it, uh, that you liked it. Um, hit subscribe and notification bell if you want to get emails and notifications for when I post new content. And otherwise, I will see you guys later. So have a fantastic day. All right. Bye-bye.